Astrologers study cycles of celestial phenomena through the lens of symbolism. Some of the most apparently basic cycles upon further inspection reveal much more complexity than is otherwise expected. One of the cycles that astrologers debate over even to this day is the simple motion of planets rising, culminating, being at their highest, setting, being at their lowest, and anti-culminating. And this is because there are those two things that I mentioned that astrologers usually look at and take into account, which is planets culminating and planets being at their highest. And now, if everything was sort of, I guess, perfectly symmetrical or we were in some sort of idealized world, the ecliptic wouldn't be oblique and it would sort of line up perfectly with our equator such that we wouldn't have this tendency for the highest sign and the culminating sign to diverge and thus the different systems of house division probably wouldn't have emerged. So that is what I'm talking about. House division. And what is house division? This is a way for astrologers to look at points in the sky and give them symbolic value, right? So the rising sign, where things are separating, or stars are separating from the earth, we see things like birth or beginnings, just like sunrise, beginning the day, where we sort of see things in their prime of life, or most publicly, most apparent, right, in the 10th house, and thus we get how someone is seen, their impact on the public, public world. We also see the setting, where then, instead of separating, we get this mergence between the heavens and the earth, and we see the sense of connection. While we fall to the fourth house, the lowest part of the sky, where we see the sense of darkness, past, ancestry, and roots, and the fact that this is where stars come from before they rise. Now, this cycle and that is generally agreed upon, but the calculations of this get a bit fuzzy when we're taking into account, like I said, the ecliptic isn't perfectly oblique. So I wanted to take you through the seasons of the year and look at how the sun shines through these seasons, and then also look at sort of the ecliptic over a more daily cycle and getting a more objective view on why this um, sort of occurs astronomically. Because once we understand the root of the astronomy, then we can further aid our symbolic interpretations. So, so first, let me introduce you to a couple lines. So here is the line of the ecliptic. This line right next to this big black blob that is the ground. And then we have the equator. This is the sort of path that the Earth's spinning goes around, right? So we sort of spin um, or are continually moving in that direction, almost as if that is a continual arrow that we're following. And then we have the east, which I have marked with this line, which is called the prime vertical. And then we have the south, which is marked by this line, the meridian. So one of the things we'll see that's awesome is I have this set to Aries season. So the sun is in zero degrees Aries, and it's rising just about east. It's a little bit off, but don't mind that. <laughs> um, but when it's perfectly Aries, it rises exactly due east. And one of the things we'll see with the equinoxes is the middle of the zodiac sorry to zoom out that far, it's really stretching your mind, is going to align with um, the um, 90 degree house from the rising, or the 90 degree point from the rising. In other words, if we have Aries rising, 
we are always going to have Capricorn on the MC, right? So now let's look at what happens. So first, let's let's just take a minute to examine how the zodiac is way down here, right? But we're not going to follow this path, right? We're going to follow this path. So although this is the sun's path throughout the year, the projected path of motion is more aligned more on the lines of the equator. So let's watch this throughout the day, shall we? So we're rising, we're getting higher, and we're moving towards the south. We're st slowly um, giving up our rising speed and gaining height. Now, once we hit the south point, we culminated, right? We saw that motion go and culminate, right? So this would be the sign with the midheaven. If we were using placid as houses, this would mark the MC because it's culminating. But one of the things we'll notice here is although this is culminating, there are other points on the zodiac that are yet to culminate that are higher, right? We see that the moon is in Taurus, right? So the, it would be read this way, the first 30 degrees from this would be Aries, and then we have Taurus where the moon's in, right? And we see that Taurus is obviously higher than Aries, right? But let's continue this motion, right? Because the moon hasn't quite met the ecliptic, so although it's higher, it's still reaching its highest point, right? So it's still going up until it culminates while the sun is starting to set. And then we'll take this all the way to sunset. <clears throat> and because we're in um, an equinox again, it's going to set due west, right? And we're going to see now everything line up again, where now we see the highest point of the sky associated with 90 degrees from the rising or another cardinal point which is cancer right and then on the rising we're going to see slowly libra rise we see libra right here it's kind of that undefined <laughs> point um, there so now if we keep looking at this for a little bit and we just go one more phase and we see what happens when Libra reaches its MC. So we're seeing it move, slowly start to culminate. You see we can even follow that Saturn's there on this motion. And here we have it. We'll put Saturn right on the MC, right on this line. There's Saturn right here. And so we see right now Saturn is culminating, right? But there are other stars that are higher than, than Saturn. For example, if we had a star um, right here, which we don't really today. So I didn't even go back a couple days, put Mars over there, huh? Just to illustrate the point. Uh, uh. Oops. Oh no, I went to today. All right, hold on. All right, I got it back. So we see Saturn is right here. Um, and it is right by Libra. But we see that Libra's culminating point can still be under 90 degrees from the Ascendant, where we have Mars, right? But Mars is falling right now. It's been after the point of the South. So we can even go back and I'll show you that. Um, so here we have Mars over here. Oops. Let me rewind time. And we'll see that because it's not following the path of the ecliptic, it's still going to culminate at that south point. So we'll see that although Mars will start to take the highest position, it will start to take the highest position as it is falling, right? So that's an interesting thing. So this basic pattern sparks a lot of debate among astrologers.
because we can't seem to decide, at least it seems, is culminating or height the most important? 